Greetings and welcome to part three of the Honda CBR 250-300 swap. Uh, this one will be, this is for a monkey or Grom. You can use it for a Grom. This episode, this part is really based more on the monkey because when you're doing all the support hardware, there's a lot of differences between the monkey and the Grom based on some of the other videos I've seen in example Matt's video where he's more specific to the Grom. There's definitely some differences, especially how you mount the radiator. Guys, let's get into it, okay? First off, the radiator. That was kind of a pain. There's a, a tab on the left side of the frame. You wanna bend that down and you kinda have to bend some other tabs for all the wiring harness and stuff. You'll have to move things around, but there's a tab on the left side that you can utilize to kind of mount the center part of the, f of the radiator to the monkey. So I used a stock radiator. This is a, this is not a steady garage radiator. This is a stock Honda CBR radiator that I decided to run with just because I had it, had it with the bike. So why wouldn't you try to utilize some parts and save some money, right? So it was pretty easy. You modify the top tab on the monkey's frame to bend down to bolt with some spacers on the top of the radiator and then a single mount on the bottom, go on one of the lower engine mount holes, and it's just aluminum angle with some screws and some solder, and bam, you have a solid mount on your radiator. I used some uh, blue silicone heater core hose I have hanging around. I use this stuff for radiator repair for motorcycles all the time. So again, didn't buy that from Steady Garage. I just had all this stuff in stock. So I went, why not use it? No extra charge there and it works fine. You do have to, I do have to note that the stock fender where it's located will not work. It will interfere with the radiator. So either you try to put the, the fender back on and the radiator is there and it will, it will interfere. It won't bolt back up or you're punching the radiator with your fender when you turn. So what you have to do is take the fender off, take the fender mounts off and move the fender forward. So there's four bolts that hold the fender mount up. So what you can do is you can just take the fender mount out, press the fender mount together, tighten it and move it forward and drill out the back bolts and bolt the back holes of the fender mount to the front holes on the blower of the triple and it'll mount the fender and it's super secure. You can, it, even with the two bolts, this fender is not very heavy. I'm pretty confident that it's not gonna shear off or anything. And with Loctite, it's on there. You do have to pitch the, fen the fender a little bit. And in order to do that, you use a little bit longer 10 millimeter bolt in the back. There's three mil 10 millimeter bolts that hold the fender to the fender mount. So just put some spacers or washers under the rear to kind of pitch, to give it a little more of a duck bill look. <laughs> but it pitches, it pitches the fender just a bit so they have no interference with that front fender. You can still keep that front fender. You know, now you can turn and not hit the radiator. Obviously to complete the cooling system, you have to put in a reservoir. I decided to just use an old vacuum pump reservoir that you use for like bleeding brake. So I just turned mine into a coolant reservoir, which is pretty easy. It's just the same principle of a coolant reservoir. And the, the vacuum canister works great. You know, if you have an old vacuum, because these things, they get brittle over time with all the brake fluid. So, you know, just make sure you clean out your, your coolant, your, your old reservoir, but it'll work great. The whole coolant just fine. And I have it mounted right behind the engine and between the uh, steady garage engine mounts and the monkey frame bolts right in. Works great. Looks good. I can easily see my coolant. So I'll know if I'm low or not. So perfect when there, right? To get the mounts set up for your foot pegs, like your brake and then your shifter, the stock shifter just doesn't work. And you, I'm not sure if you could buy an aftermarket uh, shifter, but I went out into the, my parts yard and pulled a shifter off a 1981 Suzuki GN400. So you could go on eBay and buy one. It's the same length you need. You're gonna have to bend it to fit and you kind of have to open it up more because the, the splines, Adapter is a little different than what's on the CBR. It's a little narrower, but you can open it up. It still works just fine. So you open it up a little bit. You, you kind of drill it out so you have a little more 
clearance so you can fit your, your bolt through and then you know just bend it to spec, slide it onto the shifter and it works great. I have a shifter that cost me nothing. I got it from a parts bike. So that worked great. That and the, the shifter, the left peg went on, the left foot peg went on, no problem, no interference. You do have to grind off the old pivot point on the old shifter or you'll have an interference with the new shifter and, the, and that old pivot point. So just shave off that old pivot point with an angle grinder and then you're good to go. The right side's a little more tricky. Just like Matt said, you need to put spacers in and you really have to put spacers in on this side as well. But you can't put too many spacers in because that axle bolt is only so long and the axle bolt is what is your top mount for your foot peg. So you can only go out so far. So I went out as far as I could and then got it to where I liked it and then bent with heat, just a lot of heat, bent the brake so that it would clear the engine and then be able to get a good reach with my foot with a new pet with a new peg position so just heating and bending the front brake work the rear brake works the rear brake pedal i now have it out now i can at least get off and i can also take get off the uh, oil filter cover so when i go do oil changes i can get to that pretty easy now so just a lot of bending and heat heat works works wonders i used heat a lot in this part of the the project honestly i actually use heat everywhere so let's talk about the airbox intake modification the reason i wanted to get an airbox on here is because i ride in the rain a lot and i need my bike to not get choked up and i also know that certain motorcycles work best with longer intake runners on the forum folks say this bike responds well to longer intakes so Two, two birds, one stone. Get the longer intake plus a protective air filter. I converted my storage space that was under the bike and turned that into my air box. Uh, inside is just an Unipod filter. And then what I did was I used the Velocity Stack from the stock air box because it's huge and obviously is there for a reason. I integrated that into the Unipod filter and then that became my air box. Now to make it fit, you need to use heat. I used a blowtorch, burned a hole on the side, and then just kept heating it up, heating it up, and then using the old carbon canister as a di as kind of a diagram to be able to fit velocity stack to this new airbox. So the inlet for the airboxes are the same because it's the same inlet you have on your stock airbox. However, it's been modified to fit into my new airbox. Plumbing is two inch intercooler plumbing that you get for you know your subaru turbo whatever it's just two inch uh intercooler tubing you can buy it pretty cheap i used two i used a total of three silicone 90 degree bends so there's a bend that goes from the engine to the throttle body and then there's two bends from the throttle body to the air box and then just some aluminum piping I had to put some uh, aluminum piping in between the airbox and the 90 degree bend. That was pretty easy. I had to flare it so it would bolt in or fit into the, the stock airbox inlet, but it's worth going that route because I'm guessing the bike is gonna run really well because it's gonna have the stock velocity stack in there. And then make sure you oil your filter, obviously. I use an Unipod filter. Let's see how it runs. I mean, worst case scenario, it runs like garbage and I'll have to you know, figure something else out. But like I said, the goal is to kind of run it with a stock airbox, stock bend, and I kind of want to try to keep it stock. I'm using a stock ECU. Just want to try to run it and try to get the best fuel economy out of it. I'm not really trying to get super power. I'm just trying to get reliable power. That was the whole point of this whole process. I did install the CBR. 250 gauge cluster on it dash it was pretty easy to make i had the back plastic mounting bracket that was from the original fairing i cut that down molded that to match up with the honda monkey stock speedometer bolt just lined everything up painted everything drilled it mounted it the speedometer screwed it into place it's in there it's on there solid i'm probably gonna have to do some cutting and modification on the top but i've still got to deal with that headlight bucket and that's a whole electrical thing and uh, I will also be installing just a little fly windscreen so it'll integrate everything looks, it'll make it look nicer. Uh, I really, like I said, I really like that, that big tachometer. I just love how it looks and it costs not a lot of money. So uh, instead of using the little blinky 
monkey speedometer, which I just want a little more, more tack and instrumentation. So that's why I'm running that. The chain, and that was pretty easy. Five, it's a 520 chain, you know, it's easy to do, just run it and then just put your chain cover on. Um, you know, everything's all set, oil's in there, new filter, coolant. So base, so the ignition coil, yeah. so you can use the stock, I use the stock Honda CBR250 coil. You, the wiring is not long enough. The spark plug wire is not long enough. So I used some of the uh, spark plug wire that I had in stock, heated up the base of the coil. Like I said, a lot of heat this episode. Heat up the base of the coil and just pry it and move the little boot back and pry it and heat it and pry it and heat it and all of a sudden it'll snap and then it'll unscrew. And then you unscrew your spark plug cap, which is the part that connects to the spark plug itself from the spark plug wire. So you plug your cap into the new wire, make sure you have the right length, and then just bolt everything back up. So I'm using the CBR250 coil just because I just had that. And then I just threw the monkey coil into the box of stuff just in case I need it if I do something with the, en the other engine down the road. Other than that, I think that re pretty much wraps up the support hardware. That pretty much gets you in the position where, you know, your in intake set, your exhaust is set, your cooling system is set, your oil system is set, your brakes are set, your shifter is set. So now, Technically, if the bike had a uh, wiring harness in it and it was all set, you could start this thing up and it would it would drive. It's it's ready to ride it now. So that's where we're at. Thanks again for tuning in. And if you like what you see, make sure you like and subscribe. Make sure you follow up on the part one, part two, if you're joining on part three here. I have go through all the process here. I'm trying to keep everyone up to date. So that's where we're at. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Best.